Even this crap woke up, right? Even even the leader of the cesspool today took out 1118, took out 1135, and traded into the 1150s. So you had a realization today that. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. I just want to welcome all our new friends who uh, hopped on uh, the Squawk Box audio feed. Hope to work with you guys soon. Hope to meet a lot of you guys soon. Uh, so more important, again, as you saw today, it doesn't make a difference what, it, what the case may be. Technical analysis, whether you're trading Amazon, you're trading a meme stock, we'll get to them in a second. Uh, it all, as long as you have volume, right? As long as you have volume in a confirmation channel, whether it's the long side to the short side, you have a high probability of making the right decision. That's all it is. It's all probabilities of knowing that the wind is at your back. So let's talk about this. So last night uh, we discussed about Walmart, the whole retail, um, the whole retail reporting trade this week, okay? Uh, we talked about last week or three weeks ago to, to kind of paint the picture how, how strong the market has been. Uh, Walmart guided lower three weeks ago, right? And everybody was screaming, this is the end of the world, end of the world. And now uh, that news is already out the way. So we talked about it last night, unless Walmart was literally closing down old stores. And by, by no means is that a crazy headline anymore, like what Peloton did. Well, not all the stores, but you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, everybody already knew they were going to come out with bad news. So they came out with earnings. Were they great? Were they bad? Who the hell knows? Doesn't even make a difference. This is how strong the market is. It took the information that it got three weeks ago, engulfed it, right? Completely engulfed it, just the way technology names have been doing this for the last uh, three weeks or so, and took Walmart and took all, pretty much all the retailers with it. You had Walmart uh, moving, had a big, big day. You had Kohl's, who's reporting a little bit later in the week. You had Target, right? And all these companies basically showing it doesn't make a difference that people are not spending money. We know this. The most important part is how the market is trading um, trading on this news after the fact. And it really does show how exaggerated the market is. And be before, before we even talk about the meme stocks, okay? I, I just put something into perspective. The spies hit the 200-day moving average today, right? This was three weeks after reclaiming the 50-day moving average. That is crazy, right? Just think about this. This is absolutely crazy. A dead cat bounce would have been here, here, it would have ended somewhere around here. This is three and a half weeks going from the 50-day to the 200-day moving average, which is magnificent, absolutely magnificent. You have the Qs, right, going up 40 points in three weeks, okay? That, that's not a little deal, okay? That's not a one, one of those things, ah, I'll come back later. This is a 40-point move in three weeks. That is a big deal. And it really does show you kind of a putting the gas on the fire of what Walmart did and what technology did, kind of brushing off earnings. This market is pretty powerful, okay? And if you if you really don't have an understanding on a day-to-day -day basis how really aggressive this market is, well, I, I think we could all agree, right? Forget about if you're trading Tesla, if you're trading Amazon, right? Those are speculation darling names. Those are hedge fund names. Those are a mutual fund and pension fund names, right? Those are institutional money flow. So you're, you're going to get a lot of speculation money because everybody wants to own those stocks in an upward bias. But the most impressive thing what we saw today, okay, was the rebirth of the meme stocks, right? And it's something I usually don't talk about. I don't care about them. But when in Rome, right, when in Rome, um, the rest of the NASDAQ, if you look at the NASDAQ stocks, with the exception of Amazon that woke up today, and we'll get to the individual pivots in a second, they all pretty much rested, okay? And the new res day for the NASDAQ composite is down 25 handles, right? That's nothing. I mean, look at this move. They held a five-day moving average, business as usual. But what's crazy about it is these meme stocks, they represent speculation, they represent retail, and they represent what everybody fears that their career is going to turn into, the chasers, right? The chasers, the it's going to the moon crowd. And with all the stocks kind of basically resting today, you can just see, for the exception of uh, for the exception of Amazon, they all rested today. You had uh, Netflix continues uh, to digest recent gains. 
Uh, you have Meta. They're all resting, right? They're absolutely all resting, but they're resting in a consolidation channel, which is super duper bullish. Instead, all the money flow literally went from beta, right? Technology names, and they hit names like BBBY, right? BBBY. They hit names, for example, like EAR. Talk about stocks are not strong. Look what happened to B. Look what happened to EAR just in the last hour, right? So it took. If you go, if you go on my Twitter feed, you'll see uh, 165 got rejected twice, right? This has just happened in the last hour. Okay, the stock went into the 220s again. This is called chasing speculation money. Again, I'm not judging here. You know, again, today was a, a perfect day to kind of see where hey, chasing today would be good. But chasing today would be good out of technical levels. And we'll get, you know, we'll get to that in a second. Again, if you know you take a look at names like Apron, right? Again, these are pivots we had, right? Apron. Uh, names like, what was the other name we had we talked about last night? Uh, I'll, I'll show you on the Twitter feed in a second. But names like BB, you know, uh, uh, blog, Blockbuster. Uh, Blackberry woke up, right? The, the cesspool of the cesspool, right? The leader, the commander in crap. Even this crap woke up, right? Even even the leader of the cesspool today took out 1118, took out 1135, and traded into the 1150s. So you had a realization today that not only is the market strong in retail technology, now everything is waking up. And again, you can make that counter argument. And again, I can make that counter argument again as well. If I wanted to take the other side of this trade or the other side of this kind of conversation, I would turn around and say, well, that's it. The bulls did a great job. They traded to the 200-day moving average on the spies. They got rejected off the spies. And you can see this intraday hiccup here, right? You can see this kind of intraday hiccup here. They, you know, they hit, they hit the 200-day supply, uh, and everybody knows. And again, this is not a, this is not a untruthful statement. And you can turn around, and everybody knows the last group is always to go is the crap, right? You can make that statement, and that's a probably not a far-fetched off type of statement. But if you look at how the market has been trading, okay, this is not like the 55th day these stocks are up. This is one of the very few days. Yes, I grant that BBBY was up for the last few days. We even talked about that on, on, on last weekend's video. But the point is money is being allocated to different asset classes, whether it's beta, whether it's retail, whether it's banks, right? Look at the, look at the move the banks have been on, right? And this is, this is a group who literally wakes up once a year. So you're getting something for everybody, but the most important part is, and again, we, we, we discuss this every single day. Don't be naive, right? The market's not gonna go up forever. At any given point, it could just stop. There'll be a buyer strike. But I tell you, the way we saw the market today, it probably won't be tomorrow, right? Just the way the market is moving up here. And I, I will say this much. Technology, I've been praying every single day, please rest, please rest, please rest, please rest. And they've been resting, right? They've been doing a pretty good job resting against a lot of the symbols uh, we just talked about. But here's kind of the most important part of everything here is going on. You don't need the indexes for these stocks to wake up, right? The Dow is up 200 points today, which is fine, okay? Which is absolutely fine. It really just show you the strength of the S&P and strength of the diamonds. But most important today was even when the, the, you know, even when the NASDAQ today was down 100, 100 and change, nobody even felt it. Because again, the scoreboard is just literally a conversational piece. Uh, stocks that are being pulled up every single day above supply, they are waking up because this, the money flow has to be kind of rotated uh, into some place, and that is a sign of a really, really uh, strong market. So let's talk about the technical aspect of it. Qs, look, Qs probably still have you know a good run in them. I think the top of the channel here will kind of represent what, what the spies did. But would it shock me for tomorrow that we get a rest? Again, at the end of the day, the spies did hit the 200-day moving average. If you thought the first time hitting the 50-day moving average was important, well, hitting the 200-day moving average is kind of a big deal. So I think in a perfect world, these stocks just rest, right? Just rest. It's what, what's what? Wednesday? Rest tomorrow. Rest Thursday. Every single time I want to rest, right? I want to rest. These stocks just keep on going and going and going, and we keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. But guess again, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not blinded to the fact stocks that continue to go up in this very, very strong market. But the point is, again, be wary, right? Just be a little bit wary. Let's watch, you know, especially the members of the spies. If they start dragging everything down, it will really confirm that today we hit like a little bit of a soft. Uh, a little bit of a soft buffer, right? Not a concrete wall. And the most important part is let these stocks breathe for a couple of days. And when they do, when they finally start waking up, 
uh, it should be really, really good again. So let's talk about it, right, guys? So crazy day. I mean, I mean, it's just a really, really uh, absolutely crazy day today. So um, look, for all you guys who have been swinging Tesla for the last three days, we knew how important 941 right, was, right? And this is kind of, you know, but we're also not naive that stocks could stop at levels of interest. And that's what's cool part about technical analysis. You, you don't need you know, you don't need a thousand different opinions, right? Stocks are either going to confirm on a level, which is very, very important, right? Or they're going to fail that level. Once they fail that level, you don't need to sit there and kind of be like, oh, well, let's see what's ha what happens next. No, you, you, you have to react. That's the most important part. So this morning we, talk, we talked about 941 only area left that matters if it confirms on a second entry, which it didn't. Okay, that's the most important part. And this is why we trade second entries for you guys who don't know what a second entry is that's part of the ps60 theory uh but if you guys notice it took out 941 went to 944 and that became the second entry because that's you're waiting for the first uh first pullback and it never got the second entry so we knew right away and we talked about this at morning strategy uh if second entry is confirmed you get the 960s but look there's a flip side to this and this is where we talk about don't fall in love with the stock don't fall in love uh, with the side of the market, right? Be open-minded, trade both sides of the market. If it fails that area, it will create an earnings double top, which it did, and we will look for a channel for a backside move. Obviously, we wanna give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, but again, in life, we usually don't get, or well, most of the time, don't get what we want. So life gives you lemons, you make, right? So we'll talk about this in a second. So Amazon uh, broke out today. This is actually the highest close in this whole formation. But Amazon is going to mirror the, the SPY and it's going to mirror the NASDAQ 100. So it was actually a pretty decent move. It went 44.60, ran up about a couple of bucks. And then once the SPYs got pulled, it got pulled as well. But this is the highest close in the whole formation. If Amazon goes sideways for the next couple of days and starts reclaiming today's highs and starts building, look how much airspace you have. There's a lot of airspace in Amazon, but a couple of dollar move on Amazon um, you know, one, one of the very few beta names that actually uh, stood out. So nice move there. Uh, TTD, I still like, never got there. Uh, NVIDIA, I still like, never got there. AMD, I still like, never got there, right? You see, you see a, a, a recurring theme here. Everything was in the smaller cap names. This little, little sucker looked good. I'm still in this thing. I mean, it's down like 10, 15 cents. I kind of like this thing still. If this thing could start reclaiming uh, $8, let me show you the chart. You know, this thing is just building here. As long as it doesn't lose today's range tomorrow, if this thing could just reclaim back to $8, I think this thing could wake up. So I'm still in this thing underwater a little bit, but I still like the chart. I'll give it one more day to see if it wakes up. And here's where you, 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 you I kind of sat there and I go, wait a minute, what, what's up with all these crazy little stocks waking up? And if somebody goes, those are the meme stocks. And once I saw BBY, and by the way, speaking of BBY, it got so crazy at one point with these meme stocks, they were buying size in the January, get this, not $30 calls, not $35 calls. They were coming in for the January $80 calls in size. Boom! Right? Past what you got. Allegedly. Allegedly. So we started watching all these meme stocks, right? Because everything else in beta kind of rested. Uh, EXPR 236 needs to build. And again, usually you're not going to see a lot of small cap stocks. I try to give... Uh, our guys, a lot of people do trade them. Um, I try to give some, you know, some of these things. I think we talked about this thing yesterday, even last night in the video. So it got above 236, went all the way to 270 on this supply zone. Really, really nice move on EXPR. But that's not all, right? That's not all. That's when it just started up. Then you got Apron, right? They started coming for Apron. I said, look, there's a shot this thing gets to 540, right? There's a shot. Shot it gets to 540, right? And that's a crazy shot. No way Apron gets to 540. It didn't get to 540. It went to 640. Absolutely madness. Here's the 540, confirmed this channel, went to 640. Again, absolutely bananas what these things were. And here's kind of my point when we talked about earlier, if the, if the earnings highs fails, let's watch the downside. So here was Tesla, 923 is the double support. If it builds below, can flush. I said 915, 907 next stop. Tesla got the 908. Nice move, nice move. But the point is, it's still consolidating in its range. So again, you, you got to finagle, right? There's something called the juki pookie. You got to juki pookie yourself around this market. You can't just sit yourself on one bias watching the stock move up and down. You have to know levels 
and where these levels can have price action. So look, you know, 540 next stop, you figure 60 cents on a $4 stock, right? Apparently it's not enough. Went to 640, uh, EXPR new highs, 56 next stop, went to 70. Uh, Hood, I figured, look, I figured like this, right? I figured like this. If all the garbage is moving up, and I say that in the nicest, most respectful way to each his own, right? Wouldn't the king of the septic tank have to wake up first, right? Have to wake up as well. 1120, 1135, big areas. Uh, they had taken up all the crap, right? Respectfully speaking, of course. So here was Hood, not a huge move, but here was Hood. It took out the 1120, right? Took out the 1120, took out the 1135, went to 1160. Nice move there. Uh, and then I started joking around how strong this market is. Would anybody be really, really shocked if today Tesla confirms the 944 area? That's how crazy uh, the market is right now. And that's how crazy the action is. Um, and I think that's it. I think that's it. Everybody was pretty much in a good spirits. Um, Amazon to the house. Yeah, Amazon was up 22 points. Um, I think that's about it. I, yeah, I think that's about it. And good job for Danny, one of the people who took advantage of the squawk box. So anyway, guys, the most important part is technical analysis is your friend, your savior, your priest, your rabbi, whatever you God you believe to. Okay, you don't need anybody's opinions. All the information is right in front of us. So going into tomorrow, yeah, I, I think there's a shot that some of these stocks can still rest a little bit. Now you're getting another pop here, BBY, after the close. Maybe everything else starts being pulled up uh, as well. But most important part is remember, you don't need to trade every single day. Your stocks will not be um, thrown into the spotlight every single day just because it's rotation. Everybody trades a little bit differently. But the most important part is never settle, never deviate. And if you feel comfortable, you can spread your wings through other things, like a little bit of the meme stocks. But if not, wait for the value trade, right? Don't wait. It's one thing we always say, don't short a dull market. And at this point in the juncture, I think a lot of bears are starting to figure that out. Guys, God bless. Hope to see a lot of you guys soon. And all God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.